Happy birthday, Planet Scum! Happy birthday! Uh, welcome to We Are Trash People. I'm Emily Pineapple. And I'm Forrest, Keeper of the Canon. And we talk about things related to and concerning, that's right, everyone's favorite Twitch-based comedy network. Yes. Planet, Planet Scum. Scum. That's right. And it's Planet Scum's birthday. It has existed for a full year, which means, yes, you have been inside for a full year. It's going to be okay, everyone, because today I'm so excited. We're going to have the most amazing show. We are talking about the history of Planet Scum, and dare I say, we might even spill some tea. That's right. That's right. It's Googie Morning and Robbie Hoffman tea right there. Woo! We're not going to spill it because uh, I already got in enough trouble today throwing eggs at a globe. Yeah, the purple goo was an egg. In front of our green screen. Chroma keyed to purple. There was a lot of... (laughs) (laughs) There was a lot of... Emily, I'm not going to have time to clean this up. Emily, I'm not, I can clean up. Emily, I will not have time to clean this up if you throw an egg and it fucks oh. up our green screen. I will not be able to clean it up. It was. I cleaned it up. It's okay. Well, it was meant more, I did it. it. Yeah. Should he have been concerned? Yes. Okay. He absolutely should have been concerned about whether or not I was going to clean it up. <laughs> no, I, th- I knew you'd clean it up if you said you were going to clean it up. Yeah, because you're watching. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't watching that. That was not true at all. I was editing the video. But everyone, I want to welcome to the show two the two individuals. Uh Emily C. Yes, yes, you sure. see, Steven gets it. I mean, I'm not I'm not I can't say I'm as wise as either Premel. Fair enough. But today we have joining us. That's right. Straight from behind the scenes and directly onto your, I don't know, laptop? Screens? Screens? (laughs) Phone? Computer? That's right. That's right. It's Hex, Chris Hex, and the man, the legend, Bryson. Oh, hi. Oh, Oh, hi. Hello. Howdy ho, trash people. Hi, Hi, welcome to the show. I'm so very excited to have both of you on to talk scum. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah, thank you. Oh my gosh, of course. Uh, phone today, exactly. And that's right, this is Ish. It is Bryson. Friends, I'm so excited to talk scum. I have a, a first question for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's tell me the story of scum. I figured we should do a little retrospective up here at the top. Tell me the story of scum and how both of you came to be part of the planet scum. Well, I mean, in very different ways, Hex and I both worked on CGP. Uh, so at least ourselves, we come from having worked on that and, uh, you know, uh, when quarantine and everything went down, Reveries was the last CGP, but we weren't sure if it was like, okay, we're going to, you know, be home for, you know, a couple weeks or something. And then we'd come back to a CGP. Uh, we had sort of, we, we definitely had hosts booked through, I think April and, um, uh, some really interesting comedians that uh, weren't people that you know were usual su- suspects of CGP were about to have some shows, um, but we we shut down production and uh, pivoted to being home. And uh, I was doing at the time social media for CGP, and uh, we started theorizing what we should do during quarantine. And uh, for a while, uh, our community was running an open mic, uh, which is um, which is which was mainly Jess that ran mm-hmm. the open mic, um, and that sort of uh, kept people's uh, 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 what word am I looking for? It kept people busy during those early parts where you were just like, "What am I going to do with all this free time?" And uh, we did that for a while, and then once it was more and more apparent that. Things weren't going to immediately return. 
uh, I started talking with Jersey Dave about doing shows from. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, Cohen, Cohen would agree that the open night mic was mainly Jess. Cohen would agree. Um, but but he had a great theme song. Oh, the theme for song it. was iconic. Yeah, and his contributions were beyond yeah. even just the theme song. But uh, most certainly, <laughs> Dave Cohen uh, was also a big part of that open mic. Um, but yeah, Bryson. Uh, we have three just, questions that came up for you. I'm wondering oh, if wow. I can interrupt this. Yeah. First question, where did you get those wall panels? Are they uh, decorative or functional? Uh, I got them on Craigslist. You can nice. get them there or at Ikea. Ooh. It's a room oh. divider that oh. I just took apart and just used the panels for. And they are functional in that depending on how quickly I can get the app, uh, <laughs> they have lights behind them. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh I can push this button. Um, Streamer chic. Yeah, you can't really see because it's bright out, but that just turned pink. And oh, yeah. Speaking um, of bright out, are you in heaven? Am I in heaven right now? It's so bright. No, it's just I'm in. I'm on the west coast, baby, and there's a big old window right over there. Um, Windows? Oh my god. Yeah, big window. Right. Well, we technically so have a window. Chic. Yeah, our oh, window right. faces right the basement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. Well, to finish finish off yes, my thing, please. it was just that uh, when when things were uh, were starting to go the route where it's like, oh, well, we don't know when we're going to come back. Um, we started talking to Gethard about doing shows from home, and uh, that was a big convincing that we had to do. And that's that's how I ended up uh, transitioning from uh, CGP social media to the first couple of shows that we did were called CGP at home. And then at a certain point, we just rebranded once it was more and more apparent that we don't know how long we're going to be at home. Bryson, I have to I have to ask you this. So mm -hmm. let's let's role play the convincing process because I want to <laughs> uh -huh. know what you said to Chris Gethard. So I'm assuming you get on line with Chris Gethard. And Forrest, who's going to play Chris Gethard for us. Oh, no. Because oh, of the hilarious face you just made. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, uh, well, I'll tell you, uh, I'll give you I'll give you a little bit of a scoop, which now that, you know, we're a year out is uh, is no harm, no foul in sharing, uh, which is that we were probably outside of pandemic. We were probably going to change the format of CGP. Mm -hmm. And um, we were probably uh, a lot of people had a lot of love for the CGP podcast. And so what we were probably going to move towards was CGP. One of the things that was pitched was doing something that was more that more resembled the CGP podcast as mm -hmm. a show that we would do at M MNN. And then once a month, we would do your traditional CGP show that mm. would be like a comedian getting an hour and just going, you know, full tilt with it that was what we were talking about doing because jersey dave was about to have twins uh, uh uh we felt that we needed to change the format just because we weren't seeing as much growth as we were hoping uh, to um so in doing the remote shows the pitch was hey we were already talking about doing something uh. that resembled cgp mm. the cgp podcast uh why don't we do those but from home and that was the pitch mm. Huh. Hmm. So, uh, some of us here, LED light, didn't arrive to Planet Scum until GTLS on <laughs> GLTS. What am I saying? Did I do it right you the first time or the second you're, time? You're doing the uh, GLITS. G -L -I -T -S? Is that the one? Blitz? It's the it's the the um, charity for. Uh, <laughs> well, it's not charity, but it's it's the the org that helps uh, trans youth, I believe, in, oh. in New York. Sweet. But yeah. uh, how did how did the GLTS uh, come to be? May the fourth come to be? Because before that, it was really a lot of like Gethard sort of being sad about his friends and talking about snakes and rats. <laughs> yeah, and Hell Trap uh, Nightmare. Yeah, and Hell Trap Nightmare. That was the first. I remember that one went like two and a half hours, and Gethard was like, "What a long stream." Um, uh, George Lucas Talk Show came to be because uh, the George Lucas Talk Show guys 
had planned doing a May the 4th live show, but then that obviously uh, wasn't going to be. So they wanted to do a digital show. And so through the obvious connection, they reached out to see if we would want to do it with them. And we agreed to do it. And they like their pitch was, we want to do 30 hours. We want to watch all the movies. And we agreed to do it without knowing how to functionally do a 30 hour stream. We just agreed. And then we said we'd figure it out. I love that. I love Happy that. Trans Day yes. of Visibility. Yes. Thank Happy you, Trans Charlie BMX, for uh, reminding yeah. us. Yes. Uh, Hex. Hey. Hex, tell me the story of how you came to Scum and how the re weekly recaps, which is your sort of area, can the cat not destroy things during our show? <laughs> Gatsby, go I wild. I thought you were about to ask <laughs> us for permission for the cat to come on the show. Can the cat come on the show? <laughs> Uh, I'll say uh, uh, for Hex, Hex, I believe, was like the third person that we like roped in to because it was Jersey Dave and I just like doing the at home shows again, thinking that it would be something a little more temporary. And then Hex had reached out saying uh, that he would love to help out. And so Hex was, I think, the third official person wow. to be roped into Planet Scum. Yeah, it was a little while before I was aware of Planet, of, of planet scum as a thing like yeah. i knew of sort of the i was a follower of the cgp podcast and uh and sort of the first couple of steps that you guys took online but i had been doing the graphics playback on the live show for probably 10 months at that point right the only the only two episodes mm -hmm. that i didn't work on were uh the first episode because i was shadowing uh the uh graphics artist who creates all the the artwork for the show mm -hmm. um, and fetch, which was pre-taped. Mm. So mm. by the time reveries came around, it didn't feel like it was the end of anything, right? From a boots on the ground perspective, mm -hmm. uh, there was something in the air. Uh, well, it was COVID, <laughs> uh, but there was something in the air that you know we. I remember being in the control room, and Gethard walked in with his phone out and said, hey, the NCAA just canceled the whole <gasps> tournament. Like, yeah. they just yeah. pulled the players off the court at halftime and said, we're shutting this down. Oh, my God, really? In halftime? Yeah. yeah. They were like, fuck this. Like, everyone needs to get the fuck out. Like, it's yeah. some sort of, like, Things biological pretty, warfare. I think that Damn. was the that Tom Hanks was diagnosed with. <gasps> yeah. Oh, my God, COVID. remember that? And he was in yeah. Australia with his wife? Yeah. So it started, and I was like, Mom, see, COVID's real. It's and real. she's like, I it's, guess I should wear a mask. That point. <laughs> there was also reports that day of cases across the street from MNN. Mm -hmm. <gasps> yeah, John Jay. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, so there was talk of like, well, maybe next week's show won't have an audience. Maybe we'll, you know, mm -hmm. we'll just do the show. We'll tape the show and we'll stream it. But it didn't feel yeah. like anything was was not happening it felt like we were at the we were at the cusp of doing something new with the show we had a couple more shows lined up right um i think greg stone and um Anthony it was gonna Didier. be iron man five yeah, they, they got the the titles and the 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 cues yeah. for their next episode so we had that already lined up and uh jersey dave wasn't there that night because mm -hmm. i think the Jersey babes were or coming well, sooner. Well, Jersey Dave was in Hawaii. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh. oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what a place! What a place yeah. to be at so the start was, of the pandemic. The, like a plane flight away from literally everything. But the guy was in Hawaii for his birthday for Reveries, and in the chat for Reveries. I was. Oh so yeah, mad that was great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see. Somebody asked in the chat if we could leak names. Oh. I'll see if I'll see if there's anybody that I'd be willing to. Oh. Please do because that um. is my fifth question, titled "BTS Secrets." Yeah. That is all I wrote. <laughs> oh, Doofus I was Kong. the last call. I gave the ending oh, suggestion. Nice. Wow! <gasps> nice. you. Wow! We'll Doofus Klon. It's I'm a sure piece of history. We got to. We got yeah, to. I would love to. But the issue being that now it would be entirely possible <laughs> that they have spent the entire pandemic <gasps> writing a script for <laughs> those suggestions. <laughs> it's oh not my likely. God. 
It could be. <laughs> it could be. We got to put things out into the universe. Yeah, That's the secret, right? Uh, but another secret that I'm interested in learning from you two. Yeah. And let's start with Hex. Hex, what are some a- unanticipated challenges mm. that came up when y'all were like, all right, cool. Like we're doing a Twitch network, sweet sauce. Like what things that came up that you were just like, I could not have foreseen. Uh, definitely the lack of like a, uh, 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 infrastructure and <laughs> budget at first. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> right. So you'll notice I, I, so I didn't start doing recaps until about a month in, right? A couple of weeks yeah. went by. We got the email from Gethard saying, Hey, the show's suspended for now. Um, and I just spent a couple of weeks being bombed, not knowing what to do. And I texted Bryson first saying, you know, Hey, I know you're doing online stuff. If you need a hand with any of that, well, you know, I'm not doing anything. You contacted me before you know? Dave. I contacted you before Dave. Cause wow. I mean, you're the guy, you're the wow. man in the ether. Pulling the <laughs> <laughs> so love you X. <laughs> nice. Uh, but Dave eventually contacted me and said, Hey, we're looking for uh, producers and a video editor primarily because we don't have anybody to cut video together. So I was like, I got a background in doing that. What? Let's see what we can do. I don't have anything to edit on. You know, do you have a budget for like pr- Adobe Premiere or something? So he's like, All I got right now is this one here subscription to Adobe Premiere Express or like whatever the. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you, Backseat Dreamer. So the first couple recap, the first uh, (laughs) first recap was actually edited in that. The second recap was edited in DaVinci Resolve. Oh, interesting. How was DaVinci Resolve? That's a free program, right? It is. I highly recommend it. It's very powerful Mm. for what it does. It's got a high learning curve, but if you can sit down and really apply yourself, um, it does everything that the four pay programs can do. Eventually, I just had to buy back into Adobe's ecosystem because <laughs> I know how to use it faster. Uh, yeah. I know yeah. After Effects, I know Photoshop, and they all talk to each other real nice. So, Ooh. Um, but yeah, those first couple those first couple recaps were kind of a little rough. Oh, um, they, <laughs> I, I wouldn't call them rough, but that's no. uh, that's that's sure. uh, hex. It's it speaks to it speaks to your standards for yourself. Friends, in addition to this fantastic cat mm-hmm. being on the stream, oh, guess who else? Guess who else is here to <laughs> who? spill some, some tea? tea. Who? It's Jersey Dave, <laughs> the person Jersey that Hex didn't call first. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, Hex called me first before you called called you what to be on the stream to, right now no early no. quarantine oh you called bryson <laughs> <laughs> i guess that was rude i'm sorry a new oh, reason man. to be upset who knew <laughs> <laughs> Dave, welcome to the stream thank you so much for coming yeah, yeah uh, thank you for having me we're chatting. I'd love to hear actually what your story of scum is, how scum began, <laughs> and then unanticipated challenges. Whoa. Okay. Let's <laughs> uh, for The story of scum. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it's probably pretty similar to what Bryson said, um, assuming he answered this already, but we were doing CGP. The world shut down, MNN shut down, couldn't do CGP anymore. And uh, the Discord server just kept on keeping on <laughs> and wouldn't wouldn't go away. It was they were they were still, you know, chatting and talking and you know, it was just like just seemed like such a dumb thing to not make shows for these people that were <laughs> the best, you know, like just the best fans. And so uh, we Started doing online shows, tried to figure that out, and I think we called it CGP at home at first, yeah. and that was like... I uh, hated it, yeah. Yeah, no, it didn't feel right, yeah. but um, yeah, and then, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, unanticipated challenges, this is all like just not <laughs> my world. Like, the online shows are just like, you know, I'm just following these guys' leads. I'm just, you know... Uh, I am a studio person, and I think I know that more than ever now that we've been doing this from here. 
<laughs> I'm just like, well, if I wasn't going to feel comfortable after a year doing this, then <laughs> maybe it's not going to happen. Hence the impressive wall of uh, grogismos and goos. Yes. Which screams to me someone who yeah. needs to make things with yeah, nothing to make. make. Yeah. I got really into woodworking because I was just like, oh, make something. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's fun. Jersey Dave, they were asking earlier because we mentioned the fact that there were obviously CGPs booked through I have May 6th. Yeah. Um, uh, I had mentioned that. They asked, are there any names you'd be willing to share? All of the names I'm looking at are people who had been on CGP previously, except for one in particular. Uh, Andrew? Yeah. Did you already oh, well, mention? No, I, I hadn't mentioned anybody. I, I wanted to. I wanted to uh, see if there was anybody that you wouldn't feel comfortable sharing. But if you've said Andrew, no, sure, then uh, So Greg Stone and Anthony Devito were going to be the next one after Reveries. After that was going to be Tommy Na McNamara, uh, and then Carmen Christopher and Christy were going to return for, I believe, each of them their fourth episodes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Andrew Fisher was going to uh, be a new uh, person to CGP. Uh, Dave, do you want to go over what that show was going to potentially be? Well, speaking of of name dropping, I I, I have yeah. a name to drop right now. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Uh, that's right. Everyone stand up for the queen. <laughs> She's here. It's Jess. It's Jess. 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 I saw all my buds hanging out, and I was like, "No, I gotta, I gotta do this. Gotta set some shit straight. Gotta spill some tea, and then clean up that spilled tea." Yeah, With this is the your one I saw. Towel. Yeah, I know. We accidentally gave it away earlier when we were showing the cat. <laughs> That's How's that towel? How's that towel? Look! It's so nice. It's okay, plush good. as fuck. Oh, is it? It's good? very plush, y'all. Yeah. Very plush. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Jess, we're talking about the the lost shows of CGP. Ooh. The Lost Shows, Jersey Dave, uh, Uncle B, everyone, tell me, what was the secret Andrew Fisher show? Uh, well, this it was, right a, name? it was a show that we've been working on for a while um, because Andrew Fisher is a deaf comedian and we were planning on making a uh, show for, a comedy show for deaf people. Cool. Ooh. And as far as I know, like it's always been, there's been, you know, maybe deaf portions of shows, mm -hmm. but um, this was going to be basically for a deaf audience. And then there would be, you know, we would then reverse engineer it to then allow, try to allow, you know, hearing folks to be able to, uh, you know, in, uh, engage with it as well. But it, it's, it wasn't what everything else is, which is, Make something for hearing people, and then try to make it so yeah. that you know, you know, other you know, deaf people can can understand it. So um, it was like a whole variety show. There, he had uh, several scripts written that uh, I had to like try to figure out how to do, like. They were basically just like full on sketches, single camera, and I'm just like, listen, oh. we got a, a studio, <laughs> and that's about it. Uh, you know, he's like, <laughs> it was originally going to be in December and then right? we rescheduled it, I think. Yeah, we, uh, oh, wow. we moved it up, didn't we? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It was going to be in December of 2019. Yeah. And then we pushed it back to, I think, April something. I don't know. I haven't looked at that schedule in yeah. over a year. Well, that's why I just popped up. So after Andrew was going to be free, a con was going to have oh. a show. And then we had Martin and Riley slated after that. And that's as Ooh. far as we had scheduled. And that was until May. But, you know, obviously got got to cut off at Reveries. Yeah. That sounds really exciting, though. I'm sad for that lost show because that sounds really fascinating. Yeah. Uh, but I'm curious, uh, and, and Jess as well, Please let us know what are the unanticipated challenges that came with 
a Twitch-based comedy network. I was not anticipating having to live most of my life in the beef pudin. It <laughs> 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 didn't come until later, but then you stayed there. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, Jess was the the fourth addition to this team because I was saying before uh, that Hex was like Jersey Dave and I were working on stuff because of CGP. Yeah, yeah, Hex and Hex was CGP came into the fold, mm -hmm. and then you got added, Jess, uh, because I needed somebody to take over social, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Initially, Bryson was uh, not cutting it. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Bryson was uh, doing more and more and more to transfer everything to this online digital streaming um, platform. And uh, right around the May fourth George Lucas talk show, I um, oh, that's what that's I that was my first <laughs> that was my first day um, working with socials. <laughs> Bryson was like, "If you could just come on this weekend," and I was like, "So like after the." The marathon right and he's like no really be helpful um, so my first day working for planet scum officially was a 30 hour stream oh my wow. god wow. Yeah. How was was that? That? what were you thinking were you like this is the craziest thing i've ever done who are these people i'm so glad that i'm doing this while simultaneously hating myself for doing this tell us um well i would say first bryson bryson was very kind in saying you don't have to be up this whole time do what feels good for you like um and i thought uh no how lucky am i to get to do this let me uh, jump in like i'm stoked that this is like i will never forget my first day working <laughs> um, because it was more than a day um, um no that was it was a perfect time to start wow wow Wow. And Dave, wow. Dave, you can you can back me up on the fact that we agreed to do May the 4th without knowing how we would functionally. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, oh, it's good. We got this thing coming up. We know we're going to have to have our ducks in a row. So like we're going to have to figure it out. And <laughs> I, that's what happened. I mean, yeah. we, knowing we had 30 hours ahead of us in a row, we were like, well, let's uh, do as much as we can ahead of time. And it was, uh, you know, the. the the eleventh hour. People talk shit about it. you. Get a lot done in the eleventh hour. We've talked about it a lot before. I think on this show too. Um, but it was uh, Ali O'Rourke in our mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. who had been using Streamyard uh, for a comedy network that she was building in Ireland. Um, and I, I, I think I had reached out to be like, "Hey, you're using this thing. Can you t teach me about it?" Um, and she was very gracious and sh showed me the ropes of what it is and how it works and uh, then i went to dave and was like yeah this thing could could help us do that so we agreed to do it the answer yeah. ended up being stream yard and it's ali o'rourke that we have mm -hmm. to thank uh for uh bringing that to our hi ali so, thank hi, you Allie. we love thank you Allie. Allie. we love you <laughs> that was also how i had learned about star. it yeah. yeah it was ali <laughs> yeah. ali's the best yeah just spread in that knowledge. I'm so curious from all of you, what was unanticipatedly easy? Like, what was a thing that you're like, all right, like, we're gonna have to figure out how to do XYZ with this network, and it just came together. And you're like, Oh, um, I have an answer for that right away. If y'all want to think on it, yeah. uh, working with these guys, <laughs> was, <laughs> you know, you don't know what it's going to be like working creatively and collaboratively mm. at the same time um jersey dave is someone that i looked up to as a fan so like just being in a stream yard with him took me a while to even speak for a few weeks um <laughs> Geth as well i still with Geth. i'm like oh god i spoke and then um, you get to know me and you're like oh no um but we all seem to be the same kind of put your head down and get the job done and do everything it takes to do it. And as long as it's fun, we're going to do whatever it is. Um, we're going to kill ourselves to do it. Um, and <laughs> so it's, it's been really cool. And to have such support within that and have such like fun ideas come out of the mouths of everybody every day. It's really cool to, 
see everyone have different ideas, but they all are contributing to making this thing better. And that's that's been the easiest thing, I think, for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that would make you. I mean, come on. Look at this. Oh my God. They're all oh, no. falling. They're falling. <laughs> they're falling. <laughs> it's like the Show trouble with goo. triples. Show a uh, goo. Show, Show a uh, goo. goo. Show a uh, goo. Show a uh, goo. goo. This is the newest. That's the Stater newest. Goo? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That was a good payoff. That is from this week's. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, Seder, what? Seder, what? Oh my this, God. This is, uh, maybe I'm going to cheat in answering this question, but like something that happened uh, quickly was not easily, but like something that happened quickly that this team had to sort of figure out was when we agreed to do May the 4th, shortly after that was like, Robbie had reached out wanting to do a show. Mm -hmm. Riley at the same time had reached out about wanting to do a show. And then like a little while after, Martin wants to do a show. Uh, Justin and Maya want to do a show. And then like there's there were conversations that happened in there of people that were interested in doing stuff that we just couldn't do mm -hmm. but for a while i remember having conversations with jess where we were like at what point do we say that this is our slate and we can <laughs> like breathe and do that because for a while we were just every so often ha like finding or adding on a new thing that we had to find a way to staff and i've been very thankful that for a while now we've been at six shows a week and we uh, figured out how to make it work and everything and we 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 sort of solved that puzzle but for a while it was like going from zero to 60 uh, came a lot quicker than uh than what i would have anticipated mm -hmm. yeah. that was always a, a hard conversation to have because we wanted to do all of it like all right. of it is fun and all of it is great um, but there were challenges there where, you know, some hosts have podcast experience and some don't and some have streaming experience. Some don't know, you know, StreamYard that, at all. None of them knew StreamYard. And so having to work with um, so many people to translate their ideas and the shows that maybe they were already doing, maybe there were stage shows before. And how do you translate that to a live stream show um, where you interact with the audience and stuff? So having to do all that added on to what do we mm -hmm. say yes to and what's mm -hmm. going to be, you know, there was a point where we were like, we can take on maybe something that's real simple and add that weekly because we've got a heavier lift with some other shows. So there was a lot of figuring it out and we were doing every show kind of on the fly as it came up because everyone is different and everyone mm -hmm. has a different skill set. So we were figuring all that out and doing the branding and doing, you know, promos and, you know, all these things that Bryson was taking a lot of lead on at that time it was a lot now I'm, I'm like we got through that wow now this is a good transition to say at one point jess was doing plant scum social media and i was like if only we could have one more person to, to <laughs> produce a show and then uh we were like following that lead but then this other idea came up of like well if we pivot jess who's already working on some of these mm -hmm. shows to take on more if we could offload or you know pivot the social media to somebody else and that transitions us to the fifth member of the team that was added who who would that be who's that oh it's the keeper who's of the that? canon forest oh me yeah. <laughs> yeah. the fifth <sighs> member of the team here's my question is it what, what, what? unexpected challenges have yeah. arisen <laughs> Well, no, I'm curious. I'm <laughs> curious why you thought of him. Not that you shouldn't have. Oh, no. but uh, I'm real curious. The same reason that everybody else uh, uh, is on this team. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's uh, public knowledge how Jersey Dave got into the fold at TCGS, and similarly to you know. Hex reaches out to say, you know, he didn't say I could make it bosser, but Hex is reaching out to say, like, he hey, should. I, he should. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he can make it much more boss. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, uh, I presumably uh, uh, Gethard and Jersey Dave reached out to me for CGP because I was supportive of TCGS and stuff, you know, 110%. Mm -hmm. 
And so I was on the radar for that. Jess gets brought onto the team because Jess, in doing all the hard work she was doing for the open mic and and uh, things within the community at large, it's like that makes a perfect sense for that. And then similarly to Forrest, uh, and by extension you, Emily, most certainly, all the work that you guys were doing with We Are Trash People, producing a podcast that spotlighted whoever was going to host CGP every week and go on a deep dive to an extent that sort of creeped people out, but spoke to their egos that they all definitely have. Uh, that was like, uh, that meant so much to everybody. And uh, for all that hard work that you'd put in when we come to have a conversation of like, oh, who should we add to the team that we're building up here that we didn't even anticipate building? Uh, it's of course, Forrest makes Aww. perfect sense for it. 100%. Yeah, I mean, one of the big. Sorry, go ahead, Jess. Go for it. See uh, what I, I mean? was say... Jersey Dave, still intimidated. It's Jersey Dave. <laughs> oh, oh, <God. laughs> boy, boy. <laughs> uh, all I was going to say is that it was like clear that if we're going to bring anyone else on, um, anyone that we want to bring on, like obviously needs to be able to be very versatile and do like a whole, whole bunch of different things because. We know we have a lot of different, you know, mm -hmm. hats this person has to wear. Um, but then also we know that there's other stuff that we don't know we're going to need yet. So, you know, versatility is key. So Forrest checks that box. Also, uh, you need to, like, you know, uh, Bryson was saying, like, you need to be someone that enjoys what we're making because, mm -hmm. like, the pay is shit. So it's not like, you know, everyone's going to be doing this for the money. Uh, there's a lot of work involved and we knew that. So it's like, well, who would do this because like they would get something, you know, creatively out of it. How like who would be fulfilled by this? And, you know, you guys were just people that like to make stuff and what you were making was awesome. Like it was, yeah, it was a very, very easy decision to make. And by the way, the, the, the podcast you guys were making during CGP days, they didn't creep people out. Everyone oh. loved them. <laughs> Everyone was just like, do you know? So I'm doing CGP this week. Did you know that there's a there's people that were making a podcast? They made a whole podcast about me? And I was like, yeah. No, that just like, it that like happens. made us look cool. We're like, yeah, you know. <laughs> like, like, the well, it's yeah. been, ex it's been <laughs> like, an extension too. It's been, it, like in a way that, and I'm not knocking CGP because all of us uh, really do love CGP uh, a whole heck of a lot. But Dave, I was talking earlier about how, you know, we were talking about making some changes to CGP. Oh, what? <laughs> Did you, I offend him? You started to knock CGP. You said no. I'm not <laughs> I'm and not I'm knocking. Like I'm not knocking CGP. But I was talking, Dave, about how we were talking about no, changing up like the format, uh, just because we could tell that like we needed to do make some sort of change. <laughs> I hope she came down and said, quit being rude to Bryson. That's what I thought. No. Just happened. She's watching upstairs and she said, Bryson is about to talk shit about CGP. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm no. not being rude to Bryson. I'm not being rude to Bryson. I love him. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very nice to Bryson. At least somebody stands up for me. Yeah, right, you got one fan in this house. One with no one. We're going to get to the point where I don't remember what I was saying at all. But uh, but in uh, what I was going to say is... Um, what we what we what we have found with planet scum over time which is really cool is that even more people who like uh uh love whatever show right mm -hmm. they're supporting those shows the way that you guys had been supporting cgp and how the other people had been supporting cgp as well but we've been like we've been uh spreading that and like multiplying that mm -hmm. but uh, at an incredible rate you know the fact that steven premel for a while was doing fan art for almost every show every week you know like yeah. just what showing human being well, yeah, yeah yep. showing love and support yep. for uh the performers and the shows in that way um is definitely something that uh that that goes a long way in this community and that's got a long 10-year history hi steven i do like that a project uh that we did like we seemed cool because we're like oh my god who are these people when really we were just like too shy to reach <laughs> out to anyone yeah. <laughs> like even remotely yeah. 
So it's fun. I love that. Uh, fucking tell me, tell me what your favorite part of the operation is for each of you individually. I want to know like what the best planet scum task that you do is. You like look forward to it every week. I definitely have an answer for this one. Go. A thing that nobody no. <laughs> that was a response from me that I didn't expect. You said yeah. bumpers, and I had like a no. physical reaction. <laughs> no, mm, uh, that's I, a good question. Uh, Hex did clearly break into M and N, but I believe you are the only human in M and N right now, correct? <laughs> so yeah. it's still COVID safe. Oh yeah, I think it's down. Hex has been at M and N for months. Every mm-hmm. time I see him, he's at M and N. He yeah. texts Leon and goes, I'm coming in. And then Leon goes, okay, I'll, I'll leave. You yeah. can have the whole studio. Yep. <laughs> uh, no, my favorite thing uh, that is a part of what we do at Plant Scum that uh, the viewing audience isn't privy to uh, is before Millie's show every month, when Millie is organizing everybody for the show and is going over like what the the overall game of her show is, um at that point we've usually gone over all the tech stuff with all the guests when millie's then going over the creative with everyone jess can attest to the fact that it's like watching a goddamn master class Mm -hmm. and it is the best part of what we do is that we come in we make sure everybody is visible and sounds all right and then millie usually goes over her warm-up or her uh her monologue and at some point she talks with the lawyers about this is how the show's going to go this is how we should establish your game this is where mm. you know we're going to go with it uh it, but she's not like dictating anything she she goes over it in a way that is so masterful where she gives people the leeway to have fun and make their own decisions but she goes over it in a way that gets everyone on the same page and it's wild that sounds incredible. That's definitely something that I would want to see more of from Millie. Because uh, before we had only really seen her as like part of mm. everyone else's things. Like mm-hmm. she's in CEO Skyscraper. Mm. She's in Riley's videos. Oh, and we're like, Halloween vacation. Yeah, we're like, yeah. okay, so she must be fucking awesome. Otherwise, all these people would not consistently want to work with her constantly. And when we're uh, talking about when we were like adding shows, a lot of everyone is somebody within the immediate like Gethard mm-hmm. uh, uh, circle. Um, Millie is certainly a part of that larger community mm-hmm. uh, comedy wise in New York. But Millie came to us off of a recommendation from many people like yeah uh, and to us i mean to gethard directly many people had reached out to gethard being like millie would be a great fit for what you're doing uh griffin and patrick both uh were some of the names that had passed millie's name along to be like you guys should be doing a show with millie and gethard i've been said a fan on, of her twitter for a while too her yeah. twitter is mm-hmm. great yeah and gethard, gethard yeah. said on the show that millie's the one person that he's never met in person that yeah. does a show with us and uh we're also thankful to have her a part of our network i think everyone else on the network has done a cgp mm. right except yeah. for will yeah. Hines at this point will <laughs> Hines. <laughs> uh well yeah, griffin yeah, newman i guess but mm. you know. and patrick mm-hmm. well patrick was on robbie's show i guess oh, that's, right. Oh, that's right yeah <laughs> that's right yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Pat- Patrick tell- star making turn on. <laughs> <laughs> he was given a dead plant and said, "All right, by the end of the show, bring this back to life." Yeah, and he didn't do it. Nope, nope. I uh, definitely will hide CGP when yeah. tonight. Any CGP. Uh, I want to hear what your favorite things are, but I also absolutely want to hear what you guys think about if Twitch and TikTok huh. are going to fall at the end of COVID. No, I think, so. I think there'll be a shift. I think people are going to start yeah. shifting into new versions or hybrid versions of what they're doing. There might even yeah. be a big lull when everyone's like, live shows! Yeah. I only want to yeah. do live shows! Yeah. Well, yeah. right, like at the beginning of quarantine, everyone went on Instagram Live, but then mm-hmm. that faded yeah. out. Similarly, it would, be a, it would be a reverse version of that. I think this kind of goes into the, the question you asked earlier of what was like surprisingly easier than you thought it would be. And I think... When we, when you know the lockdown started, I was seeing a lot of people trying to do online comedy, and some of it was fun, and some of it was 
a bummer because they were trying yeah. to do live, you know, stage shows and sitting on in front of a computer. One thing that I think that we've done really well and I've been constantly like surprised with is like, this is just shows I would watch. Like these shows yeah. don't feel like we're doing this because we can't do live stage shows in, yeah. you know, whatever, like theater. These shows feel like they are things that uh, have their, that aren't COVID dependent anymore. Mm -hmm. That when the world opens up, there's still, uh, you know, room for, for these. And I don't know that everyone's going to want to keep doing their shows, but I mm -hmm. don't, you know, no one's saying that they're definitely done, you know, like mm -hmm. I think everyone's kind of surprised at how, how much fun you can have sitting at home doing, doing, you know, Twitch shows. It definitely feels like a lot of the shows almost like couldn't exist on a stage or in real life. Uh, I do That's have a question. That's how should be approached. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question for Hex. Uh, before I read this other awesome comment, but I think that Hex, you'll know this. We had a question. How many dogs have we seen? Damn. As the master um, recap, let, let's let see. We, I mean, there's Happy. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, you mean how many She does this loaf? like we're going to hey. count all the dogs. <laughs> hey. No, no, no. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hex. At one point, yeah. you were logging every time that somebody shared a poop story on one of our shows. Were you logging <laughs> yeah. how many dogs? So here's so here's <laughs> one of the um, surprising challenges. <laughs> so backtrack a little bit, okay? Yes. When I started, I think there were only th two shows, right? We yeah. had Planet Skin <laughs> right. Life right. and Dyke Vice. And then this, was a, this was an ongoing Riley conversation. came on. Yeah. Um, well, GLTS GL was oh, right yeah, around. Oh, well, yeah, GLTS is yeah, made the fourth stream. There were a handful of shows, right? Three or four. So I was able to keep the master spreadsheet that had mm -hmm. every bit, every pull quote, every recurring thing that you could possibly think of, easily searchable at the touch of a keystroke. Came in handy for Sandwich Night, as a matter of yeah. fact. Mm -hmm. But um, after a while, I think it became... Unsustainable. Mm -hmm. is the word. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, I barely get a chance to watch every single show live again. So usually, what happens is uh, I watch them the day after at double the, at double speed through uh, Twitch's highlight feature, mm -hmm. uh, just to get through it. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think the George Lucas guys are very happy about that. <laughs> it's not George's Four hour vision. Show. I don't care. <laughs> George's vision. I don't. I didn't preserve the original timestamp or something. What's I mean, that is true. He's a visionary. And you're yeah. Um. So uh, there is there are sporadic additions to the master spreadsheet uh, in the last couple weeks, but I have not been keeping. I've not been keeping a... Um, uh, How do you keep track now? What is your organizational, like, you know, approach? Oh, God, is there one? Straight up, I do <laughs> I, think like, that that's, A lot of that stuff amazing. is just lost to time now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is just it exists in my like... memory, and you have to ask me about it in person. That's how I love find that. It. It's like a, a Jackson Pollock painting. Mm-hmm. I just, will say uh, Hex's recaps have definitely like that's been an area that week to week it's always it's always raising the bar. It's always, yeah. you know, every single time Hex puts that out, he usually sends it to our production chat uh, so that Forrest can have it for posting on social media. And every time we're all just like best one yet, best one yeah. yet. And uh <laughs> Hex, uh, you really outdo yourself all the time. I remember those initial conversations, even with like three shows, we were like, keep it under two minutes or whatever we were saying initially. And, oh, so uh, <laughs> here's, um, here's a, a thing that I really enjoy. I'm going to echo Jess and say uh, the human element is definitely something that I enjoy the most about working with Planet mm -hmm. Scum. Um, but the other is the immediacy of the feedback you get for your work, right? Mm -hmm. I'm accustomed to working for large institutions where you guys send it to a committee and things have to get approved. Um, other than the fact that I can just put out whatever the hell I want without approval for the most part. Mm. Um, but we usually <laughs> get... We sent you notes on the first recap and then we're all just like, all right, you know, you, you get yeah. it. <laughs> no, everything after that is just like 
Gethard starts the show with like, I remember when these used to be three minutes. Like, I liked when they were three minutes. Because <laughs> they started get, they started pushing four minutes at, at a certain they point. They were so good. So good. They Gotta were so wanting good. more. Um, but yeah, it's like getting to just put it out there and immediately get people's reactions to to your work. Like, you know, obviously uh. CGP comes, it's a, a live production environment, but you don't really get the audience feedback until much later mm -hmm. um you know you could have the discord open but i'm usually too focused on something else to be reading the discord at the same time as doing the show but with this it's a completely different story and you get to see how people feel about the thing that you put your heart and soul into um right away and it's really damn cool uh. well that's something that's really interesting and something i wanted to talk to you about uh, that I've been thinking about and wanting to ask y'all about, along with the sort of uh, who, why, oh, why do you lies comments. Something that I struggle with as a creator is always being like, okay, but where do I compare to everyone else who is doing what I'm doing? Like, am I doing this well enough? And can I do it well enough that I feel like I can justify continuing to do it? Which is you know, like a false dichotomy. Mm -hmm. Like you just, we should feel like we can do the things we love. But I'm wondering, where do you see Planet Scum within the landscape of perhaps other places that are doing something similar? Is there anywhere that is doing something similar or anyone that you are uh, taking cues from or wanting to grow towards or that you feel like you are doing something slightly different than? Uh. I'll say that what we do uh, in a cool way that's been organic that I would be the person to probably most likely fuck up if I had overthought it um, <laughs> is that we are sort of a translation of like a, a niche comedy community that's based out of New York, but the online ability lets us open that up a little further. But we're, you know, by nature of our community, going back to the history that we stand on of like TCGS, mm -hmm. uh, is that we're always going to be a little bit underground and a little bit under the radar. Mm -hmm. And there have been a number of people who watch our shows who make suggestions of like, well, well why don't you guys do X, Y, or Z that your typical Twitch streamers or YouTubers uh, do? And it's like, yeah, on paper, that makes sense in the world of Twitch and YouTube. But a lot of what we do is sort of mend the gap between what we're live performers and mm -hmm. assisting them in the digital side of things. Um, so a lot of what makes sense to a regular Twitch streamer or YouTuber doesn't necessarily copy paste over to us too much. So that's the need that we're serving. And we're serving a community that has a history going back, uh, you know, a full decade if not more um and that's our area you see things like paul Shear just rebranded his twitch stream to friend zone because mm -hmm. he wants to open up the ability of his twitch stream to be more than just paul Shear and yeah. offer it to other friends of his to do streams who wouldn't have the bandwidth to start their own thing but they can come on on a wednesday and you know the fact that w what we're doing you see other people within our adjacent communities doing that that is uh that is whatever i'm looking for uh uh that checks the box for me of like we're doing the right thing is that i can see other people within our community starting to do similar things that's yeah. really cool oh that's i'm so sorry please the nearest uh comparison i think mm -hmm. would be what paul mm -hmm. Shear is doing um and that's i think relatively recent you know yeah. like he was doing his own shows but it was the paul Shear twitch channel and then like bryson said rebranding it so that we they, they can open it up. Um, before that, like there's hold the phone comedy, but mm -hmm. they are more like stand up based. And I think that um, uh, us kind of trying to be more like let's shape the comedy, you know, around the platform. Like we're sitting at home. What can we do that's fun sitting mm -hmm. at home? As opposed to being like, how can we make stand up comedy happen at home? Um, so I, I think that that's not really a one to one comparison. The Paul mm -hmm. Shear, you know, I think would probably be the only real comparison of, of you know, people doing similar things to, to what Plant Scum does. Um, and to Dave's earlier point, it's like, uh, I'm really glad that the shows that we ended up doing did become like 
a thing that isn't necessarily just trying to do a stage show online because there were plenty of other places, especially early quarantine, to see somebody try to do a Zoom stand-up show, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I'm sort of glad that we never really did that. Um, and I personally, you know, Dave mentioned the thing earlier of like, we're making shows that I would want to watch, you know, personally. And that's all I could, that's all you could really uh, especially hope for. Yeah. And the fact that our shows are like, I think Robbie was really smart in that Robbie didn't attempt to just do a stand up show. Robbie's traditionally more of a stand up, but Robbie just takes a segment that she did on her live shows because Robbie also didn't know whether or not she was going to do two weeks or, you know, uh, two months or beyond. Do you think um, Robbie's going to stop? I don't think Robbie's ever going to stop. All she has to do know. is open up her computer and like 90 people are glued to the screen. I, it's like who closes the screen on 90 humans who are going to show up every fucking time just to watch you talk? <laughs> Robbie. like Robbie's that person. That would oh, my God, Robbie. <laughs> Don't I'm just afraid to have a set of rules. I mean, yeah. I'm to shut down Absolutely. the show every week when there's not yeah. enough people. If not so. enough people subscribe on YouTube, she's shutting it down tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, Riley. All we'll have is the towel. Riley, Riley, you know, was smart in that he his initial pitch was that he wanted to do a morning show as Vacation Jason and maybe some other characters, and then his yeah. whole thing has mm -hmm. just been about evolution. Like mm -hmm. the one thing about Robbie's show mm -hmm. or Riley's show that you can guarantee is that he doesn't know what next week is going to be. You know? Yeah. Um, and so that's what cool. Jo this week for you guys. Yeah. <gasps> Oh, can you a, yeah. share anything? Nope. You can't? No. Can you both look, can you all look meaningfully into the camera so that we can die with anticipation over what the fuck we're going to see on Saturday? Let's all meaningfully look in the camera and just say no at the same time. Okay. No. 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 Um, you heard it here first, friends. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and Mark, Martin wanting to do a game show, that's something that is 100% uh, something that we would have jumped on and did. Uh, George Lucas has obviously been tearing up whatever the fuck their format is. <laughs> the um, Irishman Plus. The Irishman yeah, Plus. Um, and then obviously Justin and Maya uh, brought their own completely unique uh, take to what this was. Mary is the chillest show you've ever seen. Oh my God. And then Millie is our biggest character driven show. So the cool thing is that every show itself is wildly different as well. That's entirely true. Yeah. So friends, it is it is six o'clock and you all have to show to produce mm -hmm. in about an hour. But I want to go around real quick to end this show. It's Planet Scum's birthday, everyone. What do you want for Planet Scum's birthday? All right. What's on your birthday wish? They do Snyder, they cuts, do Snyder now. cuts now. They do Snyder Cuts now. Let's <laughs> never forget that they do fucking Snyder Cuts now, which is goddamn brilliant. Uh, but I want us to go through and everyone tell me, what do you want for Planet Scum's birthday? Let's start with uh, the man with the answers. Oh, oh. I'm gonna, LED light points out we have the same birthday as Christopher <gasps> Walken. It's actually is technically that... tomorrow, April yeah. 1st. Yeah. Is, is so today is Christopher Walken's birthday? Mm. That's the question. We uh, will sing to Christopher question. Walken tonight, regardless. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Um, but he was he was the what the most feminist character in a movie that had no female characters. Are you talking about Seven Psychopaths? Or yes, I your... fucking okay. love that movie so much. Like I love it beyond reason, and there are pole. no women in it at all. Uh, it's such a dude movie. I want us to go around. We're gonna go around. We're gonna say what you want for Planet Scum's birthday, Bryson. Go. Uh, I want people to just have fun. Uh. The, I want the people that do the shows to continue having fun doing them. I want people that watch the shows to continue uh, enjoying them. Um, we've gotten feedback uh, in many different forms, one in particular this week that just warms our dang hearts. And if what we're doing is providing people an escape, the level in which we are providing uh, people that escape uh, – is really important even though it's weird to say that like the dumb shit that we do 
uh, doesn't seem important until we get some of the feedback that we have. And it's wild to think uh, how essential that is. Yeah. So I hope that uh, people continue to enjoy that. Uh, I also uh, wish uh, that at whatever hybrid we find ourselves in uh, coming up, that our hosts make the choices that are right for them as far as whether they want to do a hybrid model of their show or just continue their show as is, or if they if it makes sense to them to stop their show, mm -hmm. uh, that the door is always open for them to have some form of a return. I wish at whatever interval that is, that it works for the hosts, that it works for this team, and it works for the viewers as well. Wonderful. Bryson beat me to it. I was going to say that verbatim. Mm. <laughs> this is a two when no one else went. So. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, 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 we got <laughs> Jersey Dave, what do you want for Planet Scum's birthday? Um, well, I have three things, so maybe I should go last in case someone else says one of my other ones because I don't want to take up. <laughs> not big no, Dave, let's take all the things. <laughs> um, I'll do okay. I'll go with this one. Press. I think we should we should be getting more press. Mm -hmm, I think yeah. you know. Um, who do you want to write up from? Who are who are the who people? Is like Vulture talking about how George Lucas talk show has raised two hundred thousand dollars for charity this year? What are you fucking doing? What are you writing about? <laughs> This fucking right. Story. Vulture, story. We of course have been written up by Vice. Well, not we, but the Planet Scum. Yeah, it was wild. It's time to it's time to get back into the. You know. I'll I'll say Jake yes. Jake from uh, the Comedy Bureau, which is a small outlet. Yeah, uh, that's Love LA based. Jake. Yes, uh, Jake, uh, viewer of Robbie's show, most certainly in a lot of our shows at large. Jake has been very supportive of us, and yeah, I Comedy think... Bureau has been very good to us. Yeah. yeah. I Thank just Jake recently out. found out yesterday, Jake lists shows as either being a Zoom show or a Twitch show. And for some of our shows, he lists them as being a Planet Scum stream. <gasps> Hell yeah. Oh, so yeah. It, we're the only distinguisher between That's Twitch rad. show, Zoom show, <laughs> super Planet rad. Scum show. I love that. That is super cool. Yeah. Uh, so instead of press, because like it's not, you know, it's not up to you guys, just yeah. tell your friends. Tell your friends. Yeah. Yes. Tell your friends. Thank you so much, Jersey Dave. Speaking of the Jersey Dave Shore Show, uh, <laughs> Jersey oh, Dave wow. Shore Show. Uh, my my other question I want to ask is: If you had a Planet Scum show starring you, what would that show be? So you can tell me what you want for Planet Scum's birthday and or that, and then get the the fuck off so you can do whatever you need to do before producing the show we're all going to watch tonight. I do real quickly want to say that yeah. my wife just said, good night, Dave. Good night, Bryson. She just texted Aww. me. Good, good night. Good, good night, night, Jersey Dave's wife. <laughs> How does she feel about the beef pudding? She doesn't know where I go. <laughs> like, Why do you always smell like au jus? <laughs> covered in jus. <laughs> covered in jus. Where have you, you been for the last like ten days? <laughs> and why do you smell like jus? <laughs> he knows who she married. <laughs> she knew I was gonna get in trouble like this. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Jess, yeah. what do you want for Planet Scum's birthday? I want expansion. Ooh. Oh, jeez. I want. <laughs> I, that's, that, by the way, that's the perfect Bryson response. If you know <laughs> yeah. anything about how any of the conversations that he and I have had about Planet Scum, it's yeah. me going, what if this happened? And him going, oh, God. Um, <laughs> expansion, more viewers. I think mm -hmm. we we need more and more and more people to have eyes on the things that these incredible comedians are doing. Um, and expansion in like expanding who we're connected to, um, expanding our circles. I'm really excited about Saturday night shows, Saturday Night Live, yeah. um, because it's a, an opportunity for us to showcase people that aren't on our you know regular programming um, and potentially get more eyes on those projects and all around. And I think the vibe that we have is very much like we want everyone who's doing fun things that we love to succeed and we want them to know each other so we can hold each other all up in doing so. 
so that um, that that's what I want. I want expansion across the board. We got a great Saturday Not Live coming up this week. Yeah. Can you can you Spill share it. what it is? Spill it. Sure. Spill it. Spill no. it. Spill it. Uh, Spill we're it. gonna be watching episode sixteen of the special <gasps> without Brett Davis. That is the one with Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> uh, and we might have some people, you know, chatting along and who else who knows? Some, might be knows. some special guests. Y'all. <laughs> Y'all. It's gonna be cool. Oh my gosh! Hex. Hex, what do you want for Planet Scum's birthday? Under your I little Planet Scum want... glo- globe. And a little Planet um, Scum stocking. Gift. Growth is growth is probably one of those things. It's always scary when you know mm-hmm. There's a sudden influx of new faces into a community that's as closely knit as this. Um, it can feel kind of weird, right? Because we're all very comfortable around each other and sharing things that often get pretty personal sometimes. So mm-hmm. growth can be a scary thing sometimes. But um, it's the only way that we're going to learn all these cool new stories and meet cool new people. So I definitely want the Planet Scum community to expand but not too much, because if we get mainstream, I'll quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to be the new Fallon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I hope you, you guys imagine? like money. Listen, yeah. it's, 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 <laughs> the money. I hope you like money, because we're going to be the women. <laughs> Remember when Jersey Dave sold out? Remember when Thursday <laughs> pulled out first? Is that what you said? Fucking second, man. Just second. <laughs> Feed my family doing something I love? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is a great question. This is a great question. Yep. <laughs> I, I, for one, will. We'll, we'll follow both GLTS to Peacock and when Robbie becomes the new Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Forrest, to finish us off. What do you want for Planet Scum's birthday? I want it to stay scummy. Aww. Aww. You have our word. Aww. <laughs> we're, talking, we're joking about uh, selling out, but it's going to stay scummy. <laughs> yes. I've been considering blocking anyone on Twitter that makes the joke of Planet Scum. What are your guys' <laughs> thoughts on that? It's well, I will more people like, to like, look like, at her stuff. What are you doing? What? I will yeah. personally find you, Bryson, and write planets come on your door. I was the I first was just to do it personally, not oh. not on the planets come <laughs> Twitter. Oh, okay. I personally am just going to block anyone that makes oh. the planets come <laughs> joke. <laughs> That's just me. I always capitalize all of the first letters in the words. <laughs> you do, and I refuse to. Come <laughs> with an S. <laughs> I, I put it on different lines if I can. <laughs> I recently added Planet Scum to my resume and did not get a job I applied for. <laughs> Patrick was asked on Instagram Live, how do people respond when you email them about being on Planet Scum? And Patrick's response was, to be perfectly honest, I don't mention the network when I go to people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's fine. We knew that this was going to happen. We did it anyway. We'll go. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. You give a fuck. Rock. It's in your brain now. You remember yeah. planets yeah. come. They come live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're all here because planets come live. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's why we have the moon. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we have tides in the moon yeah. as the planets come live. Yep. Uh, designer of the logo. <laughs> the logo. <laughs> yeah. Designer of the logo the himself saying. Jizz? You don't think that's helping? <laughs> Help Star Wars. Well, it's like how space jazz is jizz yeah, sure. and space punk is spunk. <laughs> it's just like that. You know, I say that every morning. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, he made a joke, but let's also give credit yeah. to Dave Cohen, who designed the planet logo. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, early on, that was Yay, something Dave that Cohen. people most certainly had latched onto. And one of the earliest tweets that we got of somebody being like, "Yo, can I get the planet on a on a T-shirt?" 
Oh, <laughs> don't flex, Jersey Dave. <laughs> Um, but yeah, all of the nice people, uh, Dave, I'll include on there, the Stephen Premels, the Horde Jedis, the Bring to Noises. Uh, this is most certainly not going to be a comprehensive mm -hmm. list, but uh, everybody oh, that on, has... put on my Horde Jedi mask and go outside real quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he just straight up turned off his camera. Um, but, uh, but yeah, everybody, everybody that's been so kind to us... Uh... Mine is also not easily reachable, Bryson. You're not alone. Yeah, mine's in the, <laughs> mine's by the front door. Um, but yeah, to everyone that's been uh, kind to us in return, uh, we appreciate you, and it's helped us uh, so much. Yeah. Thank you all so so much for joining us. I don't. I feel I like hope Hex, Hex can come back. I, I feel like he has a bit, and so I was gonna be like, "All right, you guys have a show to produce." Like, I'm obsessed. Hey guys, I'm all yeah. 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 And then wow. Wow. he just come went outside fun. real quick. Yeah, just yeah. real quick. Wow. 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 Rainy out here. <laughs> and, I, and as you can see, <laughs> yeah. proves we would be able to see his mouth move, but there's a mask on. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Proves where he is. He's right outside m and yep. I'm right outside. Yes. <laughs> arm, Hex. Very sturdy uh, arm. Very hey, sturdy. hey, I'm feeling really stiff after editing together a, a really great year one recap that you should definitely watch at the top of the show. Yeah. Uh, live tonight in 45 minutes, so make sure you tune in early. Fuck is so yes. good. So good. So good. Look at that pro. Look at that steady cam pro arm. My fucking also god. Also, charity streams. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hex yeah. also does incredible charity streams. Friends, I gotta let you all go. You yeah, have a show to produce. I could ask you a million <laughs> more questions, uh, but Hex is clearly losing his yeah, Hex strength, is <laughs> uh, and so. That's one of those black bars. Yeah, I don't remember the black bars on the building. So, so much no, for all the work that you do, for everything that you've created, for everything you've put <laughs> into black our people. lives, this whole core. <laughs> and uh, here's to another 50 years. I'm calling it right now, 50. Yeah. 50 years. Uh, yeah. 50. We better be, we better be the Tonight years. Show if it's yeah. 50 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're all just like, oh my god. It, you're right. You're right, Jess from Montgomery. You're right. But friends, 50 more years to 50 more years. Happy birthday, Planet Scum. Thank you so much for joining us and good night and good call. Thank you. Thank you.